Hello Film Worlders, it's me your host Micah Pendleton and here we are three years later and we're doing the same thing, making lightsaber blades in Blender. But this time, I'm wearing a Star Trek t-shirt. <laughs> If you haven't seen the subject video for this series, be sure to watch it by clicking up here. Now let's get into it, starting with filming. Now obviously filming is pretty straightforward, but the lightsaber props on the other hand are another story. Let me show you what I mean. This is one of the lightsaber props we used in the video. The handle is made out of metal pipe fittings and the blade is made out of PVC. Now you can make a lightsaber out of just about anything, so what's so special about this that I had to show you? It's the orange tape on the bottom and the top of the blade. Now, these aren't tracking markers like you would think they are. These are just simply visual aids for when you're doing rotoscoping. And these have been so helpful because... See how when the blade is moving real fast, it gets kind of hard to see because of the motion blur? This is why we can't motion track. Without these on, I doubt I could have even seen the blade on most frames. So these pieces of tape are to simply help see the blade when doing roto in post. Now the blades, as stated, ours were made out of PVC. This was kind of regrettable, but wasn't too terrible. Why? Well, when they move really fast, they tend to flop around, and when they clash, they tend to bend. Notice how they bend all weird-like? This can make Roto a bit of a hassle. You can work around it, however, without too much of a headache. So looking back, I maybe should have used something like a wooden dowel painted a bright color, or something like a broomstick. Okay, so now production's taken care of, let's move in to post-production. So this effect includes four distinct steps. Rotoscoping the blade, adding that to the image, giving it the signature lightsaber glow, then making the flash when they clash. When doing something like this, it's almost always best to use an image sequence instead of a single video file. Why is this? When I first did this shot for the video, I used a straight up video file. After spending quite a lot of time doing the roto, I exported the shot and got this. Allow me to pause here. Notice that the blades are out of sync. This happened because, as far as I can tell, this is just my hypothesis. When Blender reads the video, it doesn't look at it frame by frame. Instead, it looks at it in more of a time-based way, putting in one second of video for one second of the render. And even if you correct the frame rate, it can still have a slight confusion in choosing which frame to use. Now if you use an image sequence, Blender will assign each frame to a single specific frame of your render. So you want to pause in the middle of the shot now using an image sequence? You get perfect alignment. So the easiest way I've found to make an image sequence is to import your shot into your NLE. Make a folder for your shot and export it as an image sequence into that folder. And boom goes the dynamite. Now that we have everything ready, let's jump into Blender. Begin by opening up Blender and opening up the node editor. Select use nodes, and I like to use the backdrop. Now you can delete the renders layer node by pressing X. We won't be needing that. Now at this point, you can import your shot. To do so, press Shift plus A to open up the add menu. Go to input and select image. Now click open and find your image sequence. Select all the images, then click open image. And as you can see, it's already set up as an image sequence. You may need to adjust how many frames it is. By holding down Ctrl and Shift at the same time, then left clicking on your node, Blender will automatically add a viewer node and connect it. Now we have your shot all set up and ready for roto. To begin the rotoscoping process, go to the editor type menu and select UV image editor. Once there, select viewer node from this input selector. Now for some reason, in order to get updates every time I change a frame, I have to drag over a new workspace and make it the node editor. It's not a huge hassle, just a little annoying. But now every time we change frames, we get an instant update. To create a mask, simply open the mode selector and choose Mask, then create a new mask. Press N to open up the properties panel and add a mask layer. Now all you have to do is hold down Control and right click on where you want to add your first point, and continue to hold down Control while right clicking to add other points. Once you come back around to your first point, press Alt plus C to close the mask. And now, you have your first frame. Now it's time to animate this. To make things easier, we'll turn automatic keyframing on. 
Now, every time we move a point, Blender will create a keyframe, as indicated by the little yellow line in the viewer's timeline. Now, advance one frame, or however many you really want to, and reposition your mask. It's easiest done by selecting a point and pressing G to grab, and left click again to let go, and continue this process for the rest of your shot. So that is rotoscoping. It is easily the most time intensive part of this process. Now we'll begin compositing. If you are new to compositing in Blender, I highly recommend you click up here to watch our beginner's guide to using Blender for visual effects. It'll help you with the fundamentals of using the compositor. To begin compositing, go back to the node editor and press Shift plus A, and under Input, select Mask. Now on the dropdown, select the mask you just created. Now open the node menu back up, and under Color, grab the Alpha Over node, and plug your mask into the factor value. Now select the top image input and make it completely black, and take the alpha all the way down. On the bottom image input, make it the color you want your lightsaber to be. Mine is going to be red. Now get another Alpha Over node, and add it in between your footage and your viewer node. Make sure your footage is in the top input, and now plug your blade element into the bottom input. At this point, we can begin creating the glow. Start by opening the node menu, and under Filter, select Blur node, and add it to the blade element. Now blur it anywhere from 5 to 10. Of course, some of these settings may need to be slightly different for you. And now we add a Hue Saturation Value node. This can be found under Color. Connect it right after the blur node and remove all saturation. This is going to be the core of our lightsaber. Now let's make the glow. By selecting your blur node, go ahead and press Shift D to duplicate it and pull it right above your first one and connect the blade element. Now blur this far more drastically, like 25 or higher. Now duplicate the hue saturation value node and connect the new blur node to it. Bring back the saturation to one and take the value all the way up. Now we can add the glow to the core by adding another alpha over node and connecting the two inputs. And remember that the top goes on the bottom and the bottom goes on the top. Looking pretty good so far. But if it's not bright enough for you, simply duplicate the hue saturation value node for your glow and add it right in front to double the brightness. And to increase the size of the glow, you can just add more blur. To add the glow from the clash, simply add a brightness and contrast node and at the point of the clash, increase both values until the whole image is nearly whited out, but you can still see detail. And press I while hovering over the values to add keyframes. Now go to the frame before the clash and drop them to zero, and add keyframes. Finally go two frames after the clash, and do the same. And boom! A lightsaber clash! Now connect your final node to the composite node, ensure that all of your render settings are correct, and click Render Animation. And boom, you have created a lightsaber using Blender. So there you have it. It's really not that hard and it's quite fun to do. That completes this episode of Action. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you would like to help Filmworld, the best way to do so is by sharing videos. So make sure that you share this one and any others that you find cool. All right guys, thanks again for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm your host, Micah Pendleton. Remember, Dream big, pay small. I'll catch you next time.